Well, hello and welcome to all of our viewers around the world. I'm Fiona Lang Sharp, IBCLC Director of Communications and MC here at Gold Learning. Well, I'm so excited because we are now taking on our Gold Neonatal Conference. It's so good. There's so much great content this year. I don't want you to miss out on anything. So head over to the website right now at goldneonatal.com and you will be able to check out all the presentations that are coming up. And I have to say we're in the midst of doing some really great recordings already, which is fabulous. And I have here today... Mandy Daly, she is here with us, and she is going to be talking about is developmental care a necessity or a luxury, a long-term case study. Welcome, Mandy. It's so great to have you here today. Thank you very much, Fiona. It's great to be here. So we, of course, I just got great insight into your presentation. I feel like I'm, I'm smiling from ear to ear. The topic to me was just so poignant for our time, you know, and, and then all the questions start coming up. Why are we not doing this? How come we don't have these things in place already? But perhaps you want to explain, this is my frustration, right? I'm like, okay, we, we need to put this into place. This is something that you live, Mandy, you live and breathe this, um, you know, with your, with your daughter. Um, but not only that, you're fully immersed I, one of the people I have to say that I've seen is just right across the board, fully immersed in this area of, of their work. So why don't you explain to the folks what exactly you do um, and sort of some of the sort of outcomes and consequences of your work? Sure. Thank you, Fiona. So I suppose I am a parent of a preterm infant who was born 18 years ago. I have a healthcare background and my experience in the neonatal unit made me have a look at my career choice. Um, and I found myself veering to the left and ending up in the neonatal space, initially just supporting families, just out of, I suppose, my own personal journey. I realized that the, there was a lot of good work happening, but it wasn't being done on a cohesive basis. The outcomes were not being recorded. The outcomes weren't as good as they ought to be. And there were lots of gaps happening, especially in the area of family centered care, development of these supportive care that just simply weren't happening in every single unit. I was unfortunate in that the unit where my daughter was cared for didn't embrace the families as, as, as equal partners, didn't understand developmental care. So I pursued additional education, which has seen me work in this developmental space for the last 18 years, I guess. Um, but because I live it day to day and I know that prematurity does not end at age two, which was a carrot that is often held in front of a lot of parents when they're being discharged. I know that prematurity can be for life. Every single day teaches me something new about prematurity. And I always ask myself those questions. What happened in those early days when my infant's brain was developing outside of that protective environment of the womb? What was it about those three, four months that made her the way she is today that has the litany of issues that she's challenged with? What could we have done better? And for me, I spend a lot of time working in the area of research and in education, educating student teachers who will see these ex preterm infants, educating mm. doctors who may go into neonatology, educating neonatologists to talk to obstetrics. There are so many gaps in this spectrum of care that I, I, I now try and fill those gaps so that we make it better for these infants and their families and that their outcomes are better improved because they are the ones who live with preterm birth for the rest of their days. And we, we forget once they leave the neonatal unit, they have survived. And we're just about asking now, what's that thriving like? What does that mm. look like for them on a day to day basis? So, yeah, as you mentioned, preterm is for life. And I love the word thriving because, you know, when you look at that in the long term, now it, it used to be that, you know, NICU was just in the moment crisis, you know, take care of life saving, those types of things. And then we extended it just a smidge. Just, and I say that it is just a smidge because two years just does not seem long enough. We know we know better now. So tell me, 18 years, fast forward, are we doing better? Where are we at right now? Are we still looking at these huge gaps? It seems like you're doing so much work and advocacy in this area. Tell me a little bit about what has closed and, you know, as, ter as far as gaps go and then what is still wide open. So we are doing better. We are doing better developmentally. So mm -hmm. in our needs, we have a lot of we have a lot more education. We have better educated staff who are cognizant that everything they do in that NICU setting has an impact. What is not happening, I think, is that follow up care. So 
some of these children are getting to age two, they're being discharged, and we have no subspecialty beyond that. They can go into pediatrics, who will see every child, so it's not necessarily focused on ex preemies. And a lot of the issues don't really appear till milestone times, like going to school, puberty, adulthood. And we have those adults now who are ex preemie who are really gaining a voice in recent years, telling us, okay, we can't change what happened to us, but this is our life now, and there's nobody to hear us. There's nobody to help us manage the health challenges we're now being faced with. We know longitudinal research is telling us the gamut of challenges they face, but we have no subspecialty to manage that. And I think systemically, we need to take another look at what we're doing. As I said, we are doing very good work in pockets still. We are still right. not there. But I think we definitely have a better knowledge about developmental care and the impacts of it and the impact, the importance of skin to skin care, the importance of involvement of families. But then a pandemic ha hits like COVID and families mm -hmm. move from the neonatal unit. So we're very quick to undo the good that we had made good. So I think whilst we have done good, we have still have a long way to go. And I definitely think we should be looking longitudinally at supporting these infants right throughout their lives. It would save the health system so much in the long term, if we invest in them in those early days and continuously monitor them and do that precision medicine, individualized medicine, preventative medicine, not crisis management. Right, exactly. And in your presentation, you really sort of take us on that journey of just really looking, taking a deep dive into connecting those dots, what what it does look like, you know, in real life. And in fact, you take us into real life because you share some of your story because you are living it. And that has I mean, it's made you an exemplary, you know, advocate, um, albeit, of course, you know, you're dealing with it. It's it's a real story for you. So, you know, we certainly really appreciate that. We talked a little bit about money and we talked in the sense that there really aren't these great studies yet. We need to do a financial look at how if we invested in our preterm infants, babies, children, adults, that this in fact could save a lot of money. Um, and that is something that you think that could be a, a great move forward. Um, tell me, is that is that getting any conversation? Are you sharing that with your colleagues and the advocates that you work with? Absolutely. I mean, health economics is such a big part of the health system these days. And nobody has yet taken up the gauntlet of let's have a look at this preterm journey. Preterm journey is a lifelong journey for these families and for these children. And we do have longitudinal studies. But nobody has looked at it from a health economics perspective. Nobody has asked, how much are these preterm infants who mature into adults with health issues? How much are they costing society? How much are they costing the health system? How is it actually affecting them as individuals and they're not reaching their potential? And until somebody does that and, and takes that on board, I think we're just going to be doing what we're, we've always done. We're just going to manage it as it happens. And I think definitely going into the future, we need to be strong enough to say, you know, maybe it makes more sense for us to take this cohort, manage them from early on and put a healthcare pathway in place for them. They don't necessarily have to stay on the pathway forever, but if there's an issue arising, they can link in at different points during their, 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 their life, maybe at puberty, maybe at 18, maybe at 25. So we get a picture as to what's going on. And if there are subtle emerging issues, then that's when we should be treating it or preventing it or, you know, helping with lifestyle changes rather than waiting for them to present with the cardiovascular issues in their 30s. And then right. that, it's a completely different scenario then of what happens then and to the health system after that. So that health economics question has not still been taken on board. Yes, it's being discussed. And I think we're still at a point where adult preemies are gaining a voice in this area. Mm -hmm. I think they are the ones who are going to be really pertinent in, in bringing this conversation to the fore and in future. Well, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for this insight. Your presentation um, is going to be, of course, up online at our Gold Nuda website. I can't wait for people to see it. And I want to hear the feedback. I want to hear what is happening around the world. We talked about that just briefly, but I think that this is going to be a great conversation moving forward. You really just enlightened us to know more of what is not doing and what we could be doing to really prevent a lot of these complications later on life. So thank you so much for being with me here today. It's been wonderful having you. Many thanks, Fiona. 
And don't forget for all of you listening, that's right, you can head over to goldneonatal.com right now. You can look up all the presentations that we have available for you. I'm excited to be part of this event this year. I feel that we really are moving things. The needle is moving, but there is a lot to do here. So be sure that you join us for this very special conference. And thank you so much to Mandy Daly for being with us here today. And again, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye for now, everyone.